So let's say that we're given the following absolute value inequality, and we would like to solve for it. Well, the first thing that we want to do, we want to make sure that the absolute value is by itself, which in this case, it's not. Notice that on the left-hand side, we are subtracting 10, and we're also multiplying by 9. So let's start by getting rid of those two values. Let's get rid of that 10 by adding 10 to both sides. Notice that 9, it's in front of the absolute value. That's implying multiplication. So if we want to get rid of a value that is multiplying, we do the opposite, which is division. So let's divide it by 9 on both sides. Which is equivalent to 4. Now that we have solved for the absolute value, we can start with the procedure of solving for the inequality. The first thing that we will do, instead of working with an inequality, we're going to work with an equation. So let's convert this into an equation. So now we will have the absolute value of x minus 8. Not being less than 4, but equal to 4. Now that we have converted our inequality into an equation, let's solve for this equation. We have two scenarios to consider. When the inside is equivalent to positive 4, and when the inside is equivalent to negative 4. So now the equation on the left, we can solve by adding 8. So now we have our first solution, x is 12. The equation on the right, let's add 8 to it, to both sides. And we'll get our second solution, x is equivalent to 4. Let me shift my work a little bit up so we can make space for the next step. Our second step will be to create intervals in the number line using the values that we got, the value of 4 and 12. So let's draw our number line. Now let's say that we got 0 here, and let's place the value of 4, which it should be somewhere around there, and the value of 12, which it should be somewhere around there. So notice that the number line got cut into three different intervals. The interval of the x values that are less than 4, the interval of the x values that are between 4 and 12, and the interval of the x values that are greater than 12. The interval on the left, let me call that interval 1. The interval in the middle, let's call it 2. And the one on the right, let's call it 3. Because what we want to do now, what we want to do next, is we want to test each of those intervals. Let's start by testing interval 1. Let's choose a number that is less than 4. I'm going to choose 0. And what we're going to do, we're going to get this value, and then we're going to plug it in to the simplify inequality. And on the left hand side, we got the absolute value of negative 8. But the absolute value of negative 8 is just 8. And now let's see if this is a true statement. Is 8 less than 4? Definitely not. Then we know that the first interval is not going to be part of our solution. Now let's test the second interval. Let me move my number line so I can have more space to work. Now, let's just choose any number that is in our second interval, any number between 4 and 12. I'm going to choose 6. Now, let's get that value, and let's plug it into the simplify inequality. Inside the absolute value, we're going to get negative 2. And the absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. And notice that 2 is less than 4. That's a true statement. So, we know that the second inequality... So we know that the second interval, the interval from 4 to 12, it is going to be part of our solution. Now let's test the third interval. Let's choose a number that is in the interval from 12 to positive infinity. I'm going to choose the value of x equals 13. And now let's get that value and plug it into a simplified version of our inequality. Inside the absolute value, we're going to get 5. And the absolute value of 5 is just 5. Now let's look at the result. Is 5 less than 4? Definitely not. So we will not consider the third interval as part of our solution. So we are done. Because the only interval that we had a true statement, it is the second interval when the x is between the values of 4 and 12. So that is going to be the solution for this inequality. Now let's visualize our result. In the graph that we have here on the right, 
the function in red. It is a graph of the inequality on the left-hand side. 9 times the absolute value of x minus 8 minus 10. And this dotted green line, it is a line y equals 26, which is the right-hand side of the inequality. And if we make sense of what this inequality is trying to say, here we are looking when the red line is lower than the y value of 26, which I'm going to highlight here in blue. Only in this section, the graph of the inequality, it's lower than 26. Now let's look at the x values where this occurs. The x value of 4, because here we have the coordinate point of the intersection at 4, 26. And the x value at 12, because here we have the coordinate point of the intersection at 12, 26. And notice that that's the same result that we got algebraically. Let's take a look at another example. So here we have the expression of two times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3. And we want to see when is that expression less than negative 5. Let's start by isolating the absolute value of x minus 2. Let's get rid of that plus 3 and let's get rid of that 2. Let's subtract 3 to both sides. Now we're going to get minus 8 on the right. And the 2 has been multiplied by this absolute value. So to get rid of it, less to the opposite, which is division. So now we want to consider the following inequality, where the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than negative 4. But now notice that we have a problem here, because the output of an absolute value, it's never negative. It is always positive. So there are no solutions for this inequality. There will never be a value of x that we can plug in inside the absolute value that will give us a number less than negative 4 as an outcome. But the conclusion is that there is no solution. So let's try to visualize why there's no solution. The graph on the right-hand side, the red lines represent the equation that we have on the left-hand side of the absolute value. 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3. And this dotted line in green represents the right-hand side of the inequality, where y is equals to negative 4. So now notice that the graph in red will never be below the line in green. The absolute value on the left will never be lower than negative 5. There is no value where that will occur. Therefore, we have no solution. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.